Hey, what's up guys? Chris Trini here for Chris Court Productions. Welcome to this week's tutorial. Now before I begin, I just want to mention that I posted a video two days ago, or was it yesterday? I don't know. But check it out because there have been a lot of updates and I mentioned a couple of new things such as the new website being finally online, a new Spreadshirt store where you can buy some t-shirts, mugs with all kinds of designs that were inspired and created for filmmakers, visual effects artists, and editors out there. Definitely check out that video for all kinds of different updates that might be uh, useful to you, it might be interesting. But anyways, let's jump into today's tutorial where we're gonna be creating some shock waves. And uh, you know, it could be shock waves or heat waves depending on how you tweak some of the settings. I also wanna mention that I learned several of these techniques from Video Copilot and the VFX Pro. So I sort of adapted some of those techniques that I learned and apply them for the epic explosion tutorial series. So just wanted to give credit where it's due. Definitely check out those guys for more tutorials and a lot of awesome After Effects stuff. All right, so let's begin. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is create a new composition that's uh, square and then create a solid. Create a mask and uh, make it a circular mask. You can make it a perfect circle by uh, holding down shift as you're creating the mask. So then what we want to do is duplicate that mask so we can hit Command C to copy it and paste it back on that layer. And now the second mask, we want to set that to subtract. Now hit MM and that will expand all of the mask properties. And what you want to do for the second mask is to sort of bring down the, uh, the mask expansion. So bring it a little bit in the negatives so that we can, uh, we can see something because otherwise they're sort of eliminating each other out. Now next we want to animate the uh, mask expansion. So we want to set some keyframes uh, right where we are in that point in time and then move back to the beginning and shrink them down all the way until they disappear. So now if I preview this animation, you can see that it's just sort of a circle expanding. Now if we offset the keyframe of our second mask, we can, uh, you know, we can see sort of a, a different type of animation going on where you know, it expands as a circle and then it sort of thins out over time. So definitely play around with that and uh, see what you know what works for your scene better. And then just feather the mask out. And what I suggest doing is feathering the second mask more than the first one so that we have uh, sort of a, a stronger outline and sort of a trail in the inner side of this shockwave. Next, we're gonna add some fractal noise. And this is just gonna you know, texturize our shockwave just a little bit. And uh, what we want to do is animate the evolution. So however long your composition is or however long you want the shockwave to be, you know, animate the evolution of one full uh, cycle. So the next effect that we're going to add is uh, turbulent displace. And every time I uh, think of this effect, I think of the Film Riot song that they came up with, uh, with whenever they mentioned this effect. I don't know if you guys follow Film Riot, but that's... That's forever stuck in my head. I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about. All right, anyways, let's animate the evolution of um, this effect as well. So same as what we did before. So one full evolution. We also wanna play with the size, you know, bring it down and get some nice little details. So all right, now we have created our shockwave element. So we wanna drag that composition that we just created in our footage comp. Now, the reason why I just don't have footage in my composition and I have another composition in this composition is uh, pretty much the whole project where we created the explosion in the previous tutorials that I really highly recommend you guys check out if you're interested in creating any sort of explosion. Now that we have this asset, what we can do is you know just line it up in time where the explosion happens and make it 3D and rotate it so that it matches the floor of your scene and the perspective. Once you, once you get in your scene, you might have to make some adjustments, such as making the animation a little bit faster or slower. And then another thing that I can do is uh, easy, easy keyframes. And once I open up my, uh, my animation graph editor and I can fine tune uh, these animations and I have a full tutorial on, on the graph editor and making animations sort of uh, a little bit less rigid and linear. So definitely check that out. But that's pretty much all I'm doing is I'm I'm uh, adding a little bit of fluidness and making them a little bit more dynamic and realistic by uh, making these adjustments. So just optional, but it helps with the uh, animation. Next, I'm gonna create a mask so that I can hide the portion of our shockwave that's supposed to be behind our explosion. So set that to subtract and then you know feather it out so that it's not just a sharp line. And now we have something that's looking pretty good. We have this, uh, this nice shockwave expanding and at this point, you could be done. You know, you could set this to screen, mess around with the opacity, and you have sort of this uh, smoky, dusty 
shockwave that definitely adds a lot to the impact of your explosion if you decide to you know make it subtle enough and not too obvious. But what we're going to do is I uh, duplicated the composition that we had for our shockwave element and I'm just adding a different type of shockwave so this one's a little bit thicker. So again you could just be set with the shockwave being on the floor. I just want to create a different one just so you can see that you can create as many of these as you want. You know depends on preference and whatever you feel like throwing in there, however many shockwaves, uh, you can do whatever you want. So whether you have one shockwave or multiple ones, it's important to group them in a composition so we can pre-compose these two different composition of our shockwave assets that we created. And then we're gonna add a displacement map effect on our footage layer. In this case, it's uh, Comp12. That's the composition that contains uh, the footage and all the explosion assets that I pre-composed in the last tutorial. So now we want to tell this effect to look at the displacement map composition that we created containing uh, our shockwave compositions. And once we do that, we want to set the use uh, for horizontal displacement to lightness, as well as the use for vertical displacement to lightness. And once we do that, our effect is pretty much done. So it's very subtle, and if you want to make it more obvious, you can always change the contrast of the fractal noise in the uh, shockwave assets, but that all depends on uh, what your scene requires. So essentially what we're seeing is just a little bit of distortion in the air. It's very subtle and just adds a little bit more impact to, um, to your scene, and it also blends all the layers in a little bit better. And of course another way to exaggerate this effect is by increasing the, uh, the amount of uh, max horizontal and vertical displacement. But you can see that on the bottom here and sometimes on the edges, uh, depending on how much you increase this value, it might start to uh, sort of distort the edges of your frame, sort of cutting them in a weird way. So we can fix this really simply by adding a motion tile effect, placing it before our displacement map, and just increasing the output height and output width just a little bit and set it to mirror edges. So essentially what, what it does, it just tiles our footage uh, vertically and horizontally, it just repeats pixels and mirrors them. So now we don't have any holes because it has more information to play with. And that's pretty much it. That's how you create a shockwave. Now again, you can use these techniques and apply them however way you want. Uh, in the VFX Bro tutorial that I mentioned earlier, he applied these same techniques in creating sort of a slow motion uh, gun burst effect, which is something that I've also used in the past. There's just a ton of uses and in this case, I just use it for adding some extra impact and adding this shockwave feel and heat distortion to the explosion. All right guys, that is it for this tutorial. But before you go, if your life is sad, lonely, and nerdy as mine is, then check out these t-shirts that I made exclusively for Valentine's Day. They might be up for a limited time only, so go ahead and grab them while you can. It has just the After Effects and Premiere logo changed to a heart. And uh, you know, that pretty much describes my life on Valentine's Day. So um, check them out. I've created some pillows that match with After Effects and Premiere. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, those are there for you. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for liking, sharing, and commenting on my videos. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you next time.